table or it's a table element, like a table cell, a cell within a table. A TR is a table row, T, T body is the table body, and then you have the whole table and then you have the whole form. So you're kind of if you're kind of if you had a magnifying glass and you're looking really close at something, that would be the input. Next level would be T D we stepping away a foot. T R would be stepping away two feet. T body was stepping away five feet. You get the idea. We're kind of looking at more and more and more code. And sometimes you have to do that to actually make this but make a particular feel that you're trying to scrape distinct in the scraping because otherwise you're going to have lots of little issues or you're just not going to be able to capture it. Sometimes when you select a field, it doesn't work. You have to tinker around and try to find out which is the best that you should be using. And you always start from the, the smallest view to the largest view. Okay. Secondarily, I'm just going to select input, which is the smallest view. That's where we want to start. And I can choose by attribute. Okay. The name of that box is Q. The type is text. Checked is false. Now, this okay. Now this is the input actual input HTML code that's there. In this case here, I know that the name Q. There's no other input field with the name Q on this, and it's an exact. We can also use wildcards, which I'll show in a future tutorial. So let's just select that. So what have we done so far? We've created a subroutine which contains our commands, and we run the subroutine. Once that subroutine is run. First thing that happens is it goes to the page. Second thing is it chooses this attribute box. Pretty useless, right? Okay. Next thing we want to do is we want to actually input something into this field. Now, to do that, we would select change chosen attributes and we would just change the value. So we could change that to this is the entered text. Okay. Let's run our subroutine and see what happens here. Okay, waits for the page, and there you go. This is the entered text. And you can see UBOT is smart enough that even though it hasn't finished the page, it's smart enough to see that that field's there and it's good enough for what it needs to do. Because Google, believe it or not, the pages are pretty standard from Google, but like a lot of other vendors as well, you kind of get what you kind of get. It is the internet, okay? But uh, you can see it worked. You know, let's say this didn't work, and it took 30 seconds for all this extra paraphernalia on the page to show up. What I could actually do is I could say, yes, wait. And I'm going to show you this to you right now. I'm going to click Insert to add one bubble command here. I can right-click, and I can tell it to delay. Now, a delay, I can say delay for 90 seconds. Okay. Actually, this changes down to a smaller amount, so you can actually see it here. Ten seconds. Okay, let's run our script again. So it's going to finish the page, and now it's going to delay. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bing. Okay, so sometimes you got to do that too. This is something a lot of you uh, programmers don't realize that sometimes you do have to use manual delays with web pages or else it, their bot just kind of works. And I found this out from another automation program and uh, I've carried this knowledge forward into you bot and it works very well. But I don't, we don't need it in this case here. Okay, so, but if you do find that a particular step where you're adding or you're, you're interacting with information is just kind of working, put in a three second delay, a four second delay, see what happens see if your errors are reduced. If they definitely reduce, but you still get them, increase the delay to 10 seconds. Okay, that sort of thing. And sometimes that's what you have to do to make a bot work. But right now, we navigate to Google, we choose this, this box here through its attribute, we change its, its, its total value. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to click on the Google search button. Once again, we have to tell you bot, okay, this is an input, I'm going to choose by attribute and the name is button G. I know for a fact, if you click here, you see this is button I. So let's say we're going to select that, choose by attribute, button G. Sometimes, again, you have to select outer text, or whatever, but in this case, we're pretty safe. This this is pretty, pretty standard, okay? Now we have this button chosen. Now we want to click the button, so we just click chosen. Let's try our bot now. Okay, so here we are. 
Now you see here, there, when we said click chosen, there is no ability to create a delay. Now, if I tried to scrape data off this page, it would very, it work very haphazardly, and that's not good. So we need to make sure we have some, some, some sort of delay in here. So right-click on the actual bubble, Action Commands. Oh, sorry, I always use these two interchangeably, the flow and the action. Wait finish. Now with the wait finish is exactly like the, the, the waiting in the other command up here. Within the nav command when we're waiting. The difference on the wait finish is it waits for the page to finish or it will proceed after the delay. So let's say I said made this delay ten seconds. Instead of waiting for it to finish, it would just after ten seconds, if the page is still not finished, it would just continue on going. It does have its uses on one bot that I wrote ri just recently, it was using another form of Google's pages to grab data, and I had to create this, uh, make this delay 90 seconds, or else the bot would intermittently fail. Does it increase the time it takes the bot to do something? Yes, but there's just really no way around it. Okay, let's continue on here. So now we have our bot, we have um, ourselves on to our next page, and this is the information we want here. Okay, so in this number here is different. Now, of about, and now let's just say, okay, that's what we want to scrape. Now, my recommendation is before you scrape any information on a page, you can very simply scrape it. Actually, let's just go through that here. So, we have to find this information on the page first of all. So, I'm going to right click on this, and I can look at the bolding. Okay, so it's the outer text is showing me the bolded number, and here's where we would use wildcards, but I don't think that's enough information. Let's just dig down one level, okay? Okay, choose by attribute. Now you see we're actually selecting more information again, okay? Now, okay, we want to see about, okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is I'm just kind of getting a look and an idea, okay, result stats is the idea on that, and that's for the whole piece here. Okay, the inner HTML and the outer HTML, in a lot of cases, is pretty close to the same. And I'm really just kind of getting an idea what it looks like. But now we have to scrape this information, okay, and we're going to do this slightly different. Right click, now we have to set something called a variable. A variable is just a placeholder. Uh, if you remember, you know, mathematics in high school, like you can use x as a variable. Let's say we say uh, search competition. Okay, I'm going to leave that blank. Now you see here that I've given it no value, and you'll see why in a second here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to just say page scrape. Okay? Now you see this looks like what we originally looked at. Let's just take a look here. I did zip ahead, right click. And I see the B is still selected. Now I'm going to jump to the P so I can get more information because I think it's important here. Now I'm going to choose page scrape. Now you see why I went and looked at the attributes. It's a very fast way to look. Now what a page scrape does is it looks for text before and text after. So let's say that's the information we want right there. Okay. So right now, as it sits, if I get these results exactly this beginning, let's take a look here. So, you know, we follow along here, results, 10-10, uh, and the 10s are bolded of about. Now, we have no guarantees that this is going to say 10. And really, truthfully, we don't. We have no guarantees of, that it's going to say all this. But, you know, I like to give my bots the best chance of surviving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of everything just before that closing bold tag uh, of the about, so it'll recognize that as pretty distinct on the page. Now, secondarily, again, here this is something else. This is the information that's after. You know, it says slot a closing bold tag for a new bold tag. This is the entered text. Now, there's no guarantees with all the rest of this either. But let's say I'm going to say that's what I'm going to accept. So I'm going to say OK. Let's give the uh, the bot a chance here. Sorry, it's time to reboot my PC. It's getting a little slow. Let's just take a look at this a little closer. So what's happening is, 
it's going to do a page scrape on this page looking for this information here to this information here. Now finally we have to do something with this information. For this simple bot, instead of manipulating, I'm just going to display the information up here. Okay. To do that we're going to use a user interface element and a stat monitor. I'm going to say total competition. Okay, and what are we going to watch? We insert a variable, and the variable is going to be search competition. Let's run our bot and see what happens here. I'm going to close this up a little bit.